Welcome back everyone, Dan Vega here with another tutorial and today we're going to do something called Ask the Teacher. So one of the great things about teaching online is the interaction I get with my students and all of the great questions that come in. Uh, if for nothing, they give me some great content to either blog about or create some YouTube tutorials on. So that's what we're going to do today. We are answering a question and we're going to walk through and take a look at how we can solve this problem. So today's question comes in from my Spring Boot intro course and basically what it says is, Dan, suppose you have a header, footer, and content templates. The header has the navigation bootstrap code. For example, you have multiple tabs in the navigation, i.e. admin and customers. How do you make the tab visually active if you are on the customer page or vice versa when using the templates. Thanks, AK. Well, first off, thanks AK for submitting that question and let's jump into it. So I'm gonna take a look at a project here that I have set up and I will link to the source code which is gonna be on GitHub for this particular project so you can check out the finished project. So I have a basic project here. Um, Nothing crazy going on. I have some Spring Boot uh, uh, data JPA going on. I have Timely set up for my templates, and it's just a basic Spring Boot starter web project. Here in my application, nothing crazy going on. I do have a data loader class that is loading some data up for us. Um, and then I have a home controller, and this home controller has a mapping of forward slash. And so this is just our root mapping. This is where we're gonna display our most recent post. And then I have some time leaf templates and a layout template here. And so here in my layout template, I have a nav bar and I have a couple buttons like home, posts, and authors. So basically what AK was saying is if I'm on the home page, I want the class of that particular particular list element to be active and so we're gonna look at figuring out how we can do this so let's go ahead and fire up this application and we'll take a look at the interface and then we'll come back and, and take a look at a couple different options we have to solve this problem okay so this is gonna load up so we're on the home page here and again we're just displaying some static text and the latest post but we're on the home page and this home button isn't selected. Um, so if we go back to the main and we say active, save this, and in our Spring Boot app here, just so you know, in our application.properties, we have told Timeleaf not to cache its templates. So we can go ahead and easily make that change and then go ahead and refresh the page. So you see with the active class, it tells us that we are on the home page. So from a UI standpoint, that's pretty important so that the user knows where they are. So how can we do this here? Um, well, we actually have a couple of different options. So the first option is we have the HTTP servlet request available in our template right off the bat. So we could do something like this. So Let's say we wanted to append, we wanted to append a class. So we can actually use something called append class. And just look here at my notes, but so what we want to do is we want to check. So if some variable exists, we want to set this to, to active, right? So we can look at Sorry. Okay, so we can go ahead and grab the HTTP servlet request. And we can grab one of the uh, properties on that particular class, one of which is the request, is that right? Your request URI. And we can say, all right, if that contains something like slash posts then I want you to display the active oops let's go one more yep 
So in that case, I want you to append the active class to that particular dropdown. Now we're not going to go through that because um, that will work, but this is my least favorite uh, route to kind of fix this issue. So another one is I come from the world of Groovy and Grails. And in Grails, the really nice thing is the controller name and controller action is basically available to you in every view template. So that got me thinking it would be really nice if we had both the controller name and the controller action available in every template. So let's look at doing this the manual way first, right? So if we're here in our in our forward slash, our root context, basically, I can go ahead and add a couple attributes. So I'm gonna add something called controller home. And in this case, it's going to be home. And let's just go ahead and copy and paste that. And then let's go ahead and call this, um, oh, whoops, we wanna call this controller name. And then let's call this action name. And the name of this action is just home as well. So the action is basically the method that you're in. The controller is the controller that we're in. So if we went ahead and saved that and went back to our main layout, we could do something pretty cool here. We can just say, again, th append class. We want to say if controller name is equal to, whoops is equal to home, I want you to append the class active. So we're gonna go ahead and rerun this. So by default, it's going to have a class of home, and if this all um, works out well, then it should append the class active. So let's go ahead and look at what went wrong here. Uh, we have home, append class, controlling. Oh, that's why. Um, gotta love live demos. So the name of that attribute is actually class append. So we don't even have to rerun Tomcat here. Let's go ahead and refresh this. And there it is. So now it has the active class on it. So you see it has both home and active. So that's pretty cool, but there's a big problem here and you probably already thought about it while I was doing this. So to make this work in every single method, we're gonna have to set the controller name and the action name. Worse off, if it's not available, the way that we kind of wrote that uh, attribute in our list element, it could cause errors. So while this is kind of a good approach, I don't like this. It's just too much manual work, right? So now if we go ahead and um, try to think of another way to do this, one thing that popped into my mind right away was creating an interceptor. So we can actually create an interceptor to set the controller name and the action name after every single request. So let's do that. I have a package over here for interceptors and we're just going to create a new class and I'm going to call this base interceptor and I'm going to go ahead and paste some code in here because you're probably not going to want to watch me type all this out. So what is going on here? So we extend the handler interceptor adapter and by doing so we're going to create a post handle method and inside this post handle method we are going to be able to do a couple things so we're setting the controller name and the action name to an empty string so that if we don't get into this um, if we don't get in this uh, inside of this if statement then we still have at least a controller name and an action name available to our view template they're just going to be empty so first what we're looking at is the handler, an instance of handler method. And handler method is what um, gets, uh, basically the handler is, is what is passed into this post handle method. So all we do is we try to create a handler method. 
And based off of that, we have some different, um, different things that we can do with it. And one of them is we're going to go ahead and just get the class. And now most of my classes are going to be called, you know, home controller, post controller, author controller. So all we're doing is replacing controller there and bringing back that name. So in this case, it should just be home. Um, I did run into an issue with Spring Security. If you are using Spring Security, you can't just call handler method dot, you know, get class, get simple name. So that's why you see me getting the bean type there. You could call it, if there's no Spring Security involved, you could call get class. Um, I'll also link to a blog post that kind of talks about some of this stuff. But anyways, this is an interceptor. It's basically going to run after every post request. Now to make this work in my web configuration, I just need to do one more thing and add this interceptor. So to do so, I'm actually just going to go into source and override implement methods. And so I want to add interceptors. So I'm going to check that and hit OK. So now we just need to add in some stuff here, some magic. So we want to say registry dot add interceptor. And all we got to do is create a new instance of our base interceptor. And there it is. And that's it. So now when we start up uh, Tomcat here in our application, it's going to register my base interceptor. And that post handle is going to run after the request is made, set those two variables, and send them down to the view. So now let's go ahead and run this. And you'll just notice, again, we don't have those variables being set in our home controller. But this application should work just the way it did before. So now if I go to home page, let's go ahead and click that. Oh, something. Oh, you know what happened? Um, <clears throat> so uh, we're probably looking for probably a case sensitive look. That's all it was. So it's taking the name home controller. Obviously we could do a case insensitive look there. Again, this is just a simple demo. So now we have posts over here and authors over here and we want to do the same. So all we can do is copy this and on our, so we have a class after class, uh, where are we at? Okay. So we want this on here. So if controller name equals post, and on this particular one, controller name equals author. So again, we shouldn't have to restart this. All right, so now if we go to post and list, now post is active. And if we go to authors and list, now authors is active. So pretty cool stuff. Um, you know, like I said, there were a couple different ways we could have attacked this. Uh, and I think there are some other ways we could probably do this as well. But this is a pretty clean solution that I, I came up with where I don't have to go ahead and set these variables on it on every request. So I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I'd love your feedback, though. If you got any other ideas on how we can solve this, please let me know. And if you have any other questions, whether you're in my course or not, please uh, shoot me some questions. I'd love to use them on this channel. And I hope you have a good day. Thanks.